One of the questions I get asked oftentimes when I'm talking to people that are wanting to get into weed control and fertilization is about the equipment they need to get started. The good news, in my opinion, it's a little bit simpler even than starting in a mowing business where you might need a mower and a trailer and trimmers and blower and hedge trimmer that you know there's a quite a few pieces of equipment when i went and started my weed control and fertilization business i went and bought a spray rig and a push spreader and i was pretty much up and running now i did have to get a bigger truck to carry the tank but in this video i want to talk to you about some of the equipment that you can use to get started in the weed control and fertilization and some of it's going to vary on your budget some of it's going to depend on the size of your business and some of it's going to depend on what you're trying to grow into someday because you might start with one rig and then move up and upgrade to others so let's get started discussing that right now hopefully if you watch the channel regularly you recognize my rig here and i've got a right on spreader sprayer on the back i've got a 400 gallon split tank on the back so when i say 400 split tank it's like 300 gallons on the large side 100 gallons on the small side you see the handheld sprayers on the other side i've got my electric reel and then i've got two backpack sprayers so and I personally love a flatbed because it gives you a lot of room to put a lot of fertilizer back here, which is great. Now, a lot of you guys know that I work with Graham Spray Equipment. And I bought this rig from them years ago and it's been doing great ever since. I'm gonna go over some of the features of my rig, but I wanna start with talking about something small because oftentimes I get a conversation with somebody and maybe they've got an existing mowing business and they're wanting to add on weed control and they're just not sure how many customers they're gonna be able to get right off. You know, maybe I can get, 30, 40, 50 customers, or even up to 100 in the first year, and it may take them a little while to grow in to a bigger rig. So they might wanna start off with something smaller. In my opinion, I would not start off with anything less than 200 gallons as a designated spray tank. Now, if you just got a, a small tank that you wanna do tree and shrub work with, then that makes sense. Or if you just have something that you wanna use just to refill a ride-on spreader sprayer, in that situation, get by with a smaller tank. But if you're talking about out there blanket spraying yards, less than 200 gallons is gonna run the risk of you possibly running out in the middle of the day, which is not fun because then you got to go back and fill up and mix the chemicals again and it's just not good now good thing is you can calibrate your sprayer to get more square footage out of a tank so for instance my 400 gallon tank i spray about two gallons for every thousand square feet so let's just say i've got the whole thing filled up with 400 gallons of the same mix and i'm out blanking in yards with pre and post emergent then i can cover 200,000 square feet well that's 20 10,000 square feet yards that my legs would be so tired by the end of the day that's a lot of walking that's a lot of yards uh, or even 5,000 square feet yards i could do 40 of them okay that's plenty i'm done for the day okay i'm going home i gotta take a nap if you got a 200 gallon tank let's say you take the volume down a little bit and you're spraying like 1.2 gallons per thousand square feet well then you can still get a lot of square footage out of that to hopefully not have to fill up in the middle of the day because that's really what you don't want to happen supply chain issues are real in the spray tank business as well which is unfortunate but Graham does have quite a few of the smaller units 200 gallon 225 things like that on the lot ready to go that you can go get let me show you a little bit of the footage from some of the rigs that they have in stock this is the 200 gallon poly sprayer it's got an AR40 pump on it with a gearbox it's got a Hane reel with 400 foot of 3 8 hose it's got the new Duro Max 7 horsepower engine heavy duty steel frame this fits a full size pickup truck and this is ready to spray and what I tell people is, hey, if you go buy a 200 gallon rig, one, I believe when you calibrate it down to, like I said, 1.2 gallons per thousand, I'm just throwing that out. It doesn't have to be exactly that. But there can be a rig that you get a lot of use out of. And say five years from now, your business is blown up and you're huge and you need to start adding more trucks. Well, you have some options. You can one, sell that rig because there's a lot of people that are starting in the weed control and fertilization business and they might want to buy that rig. Two, you can probably keep it as a designated rig and start a second truck. And so you still got a, a rig. It's not like it's wasted because you, you now want to 
grow into a bigger rig or three it may become like a designated rig for something let's just say you got into spraying gravel parking lots and you wanted something you could just put your gravel parking lot mix in and go spray it. so you have this designated rig for one purpose that you're going to use for that so there's some things to think through and some options but the point being if you buy and you do outgrow it one day it's not like it's wasted you made a lot of money off of it you can sell it you can keep it you can start a second truck there's some things you can do the other question I get asked a lot of times is about the split tank because people know I've got a split tank and you see those two yellow valves right there those are both pointing up that means I'm pulling from the small side if I flip both of those valves down it's going to start pulling from the large side well the split tank has some advantages in my opinion so I'm dealing with Bermuda zoysia centipede and St. Augustine grass now most of the yards are Bermuda and zoysia but I do have quite a few centipede and even a few St. Augustine lawns so oftentimes when I'm out blanking in yards in the spring or fall with pre and post submerged applications I'll put the zoysia Bermuda mix in the large side because that's primarily what I deal with but I'll put the centipede St. Augustine mix which is slightly different in the small side because I might run up on some of those now if you had a 200 gallon tank that was not split that that's fine also you just might have to go do all your Bermuda zoysia yards one day and then empty the tank and do your centipede St. Augustine lawns the next day the advantage of having a split tank is if they're next door neighbors and one has centipede and other has Bermuda I can spray the Bermuda one flip the valves and spray the centipede one while I'm right there and not have to make a separate trip back to the same neighborhood. And what I typically do is I'll put just a little bit of blue dye in the small side, just enough to change the color of the water. Then when I flip those valves, I spray it back into the original tank until the water turns that tinted blue. And then I know I'm now spraying the mix that's safe for the centipede grass or whatever it is. There's other applications for that. I might be in the springtime and I have a mix on one side that's for my new signups and the crabgrass is already germinated and I want to put some kind of crabgrass post -emergency merging in there then I might put that in one side where I may have a different mix on the other side so maybe you're in the transition zone and you've got warm season mix in one side cool season mix in the other use your imagination but you can see some advantages of the split tank the other times I use it sometimes I'll have the small side mixed up at a much higher potency and it's to go into my right on spreader sprayer it sprays a lot lower volume so it's mixed a lot more concentrated where the large side might be set to spray out of my hose over here and you see the guys that's got the big Azuzu flatbeds and they've got a 600 gallon tank with another sprayer tank and another sprayer tank and I mean they're out there to conquer the world they've got multiple hose reels multiple pumps they've got them where you can call your ride on spreader sprayer with you basically you have to decide what you want for your business and then let them guys build it for you while they do try to build what the customer wants I try to lead on I try to lean on their experience a little bit when I go talk to them because they have built thousands of these things and if I only go in there and tell them something that's really not a good idea like I'm gonna put my hose reel on the other side of the truck or something you know I was like let's just let these guys make some strong recommendations and if I have a slight modification that's fine but I typically just go with what the expert says another question I get asked a lot is Jason do you think I should get a ride on spreader sprayer first or a spray rig first well I mean if I had to choose I'm gonna go with the sprayer my honest answer is I hope you can get both at the same time now again if you have to get the sprayer first and then hopefully able to get a ride on machine uh, as soon as possible that would be great because pushing lawns is not a whole lot of fun pushing a spreader especially on hills this is the old ground logic unit and I use it because I have a lot of small yards and also it's very good on hills there's some things that I'm not crazy about but it's got a spiker spray which I like so it throws a good pattern it holds the hill very good so if you want a smaller spreader there's other options out there there's like the Z spray LTS which is made to go through a 36 inch gate there's permagrain there's Turfco T3100 and there's some other new ones out there as well I don't have a lot of experience on the larger machines like your Z sprays and things like that but I have some friends that have them and they love them because they talk about how much ground you can cover. So if you've got some big yards or you're doing some sports turf or something like that, then you may want to look into eventually getting one of these larger machines. Say, Jason, well, why would you get a spray rig first? Why wouldn't you just get that machine? Well, the larger machines are going to have a much better spray system than those smaller ride-on machines. But I would still get a spray rig to fill that up, even if you're spraying almost exclusively with the ride-on machine. Now, me personally, I almost always am spraying out of my big tank. I don't spray a whole lot with the small machine. I do every once in a while 
but I like the agitation in the big tank. I like being able to mix multiple products in that big tank and get the great agitation and then to be able to walk by hand on these small yards and get right up next to a flower bed without getting on the flower bed. Again, if you've got a bigger machine, the Z sprays and stuff, they've got a hose reel that allow you to get in some of those tight spaces. And also for us with the warm season grasses, you can get a foam marking kit on those big machines so you can see exactly where you're spraying. Because I'll tell you from experience, if you leave a six inch gap between the, the yard and the flower bed, that's gonna be six inches of weeds where I live. This is probably a no-brainer, but make sure you get a reel that is electrical wine. You don't want to be hand winding this thing. I mean, and honestly, I keep two spare parts on my truck. I keep a belt that runs around that pulley, and I've got mechanical agitation on this large side. I got a bean piston pump, so I've got some real serious agitation on this large side. And the other thing I keep spare is an extra button. Every once in a while, this button will go bad, and it's just two screws on the back to put a new button on. And believe me, you want to change that button out and not have to hand wind 300 foot of hose up. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll see what I can do. Again, the Graham people have the smaller rigs in stock, ready to go. If you want a larger rig, then I would encourage you to go ahead and call them and have the conversation about price and about when do I need to order it to make sure I've got it ready to go. Whether you're looking to start in the spring or in January, whenever you need that thing ready to go, I would go ahead and have a conversation and say, put me in line to get one because I don't want to call them in December and you're down the list and it's going to be a while before you get yours. Just how I would handle that because if you're looking to start a weed control and fertilization business next year, then you need to be thinking about that now and get everything ready to go because you don't want to be scrambling trying to find your equipment in March when the customers are calling and you're not prepared to go out there and take on those properties. Do a quick Google search on Graham Spray Equipment there in Douglasville, Georgia or visit them at Graham se.com give those guys a call if you need resources for weed control and fertilization or mowing or mosquito spraying you can go to lawncarelife.com i'm jason creel leave the questions below and we'll see you guys in the next video